All right, so let's get started. Uh, today we're going to continue on with chapter 18. Uh, last time we discussed buffers. Today we're going to discuss titrations. Okay, so this is a particular experiment that you're going to be doing in lab, um, as well as what we're going to be learning about today will be the associated calculations that you do. Uh, we're going to see that these titration problems are kind of a pain in the butt. They're like these long sort of problems. Uh, the good news is, is that they're going to have us practicing a lot of the stuff that we learned about, about calculating pH, as well as working with buffers. Okay, so we'll be practicing those problems we learned how to do on Wednesday in the context of a titration here. All right, so what is a titration? What you're going to do is you're going to start with a flask, and you're going to add an acid to it. All right, so now we have an acidic solution in our flask. Uh, each titration, you're going to add a few drops of what's called an indicator. Your indicator is going to be this color change compound that you're going to be looking for when you do your experiment. Okay, and I'll explain what I mean by that here in a second. So we have our acid in it. It's got a few drops of this indicator in it. And now we're going to take a burette. You all remember burettes, right? Those long skinny things and they got those little stopcocks on them as well so that you can open and close to add solution. All right, and importantly, your burette is going to be filled with base. So we have acid in our flask and base in our burette. Uh, whenever we use a burette, we gotta take two readings off of it, an initial volume, and then we open up that stopcock and start letting that uh, solution out. In this case, since it's a base, when we're adding it to our acid, we're going to be promoting this acid-base reaction, right? The reaction between my acid and my flask and my base in my burette. And we're going to keep adding base until all of a sudden we see this color change, right? That's our indicator changing color, telling us to stop adding base. All right. Once you're done, you take your final reading off of your burette, right? Again, each burette will need two readings, an initial and a final. And the difference between those is how much you actually added, the volume of base added. All right? So in terms of what you'll be doing in a lab, you'll be doing exactly this, right? Take a flask, add some acid to it, put a few drops of indicator in there. Set up your burette with some base. Slowly add that base until you see this color change, and then you stop. All right? Cool. So uh, what we're going to be doing is learning about the calculations behind this. What is happening to the pH as you're starting out? If I start out with a flask of acid, is my pH going to be uh, low or high? An acidic solution would have a low pH. I add base to it, that pH starts to climb. Okay? So what is exactly happening to the pH? That's our calculations that we're going to be learning about. Each titration will give you a curve that looks something like this. Okay? This is what we call a titration curve. On my y-axis here is pH, and on the x-axis is the volume of base that I've added. All right, so what we can see before we, you know, we'll pick this thing apart here in a second, but what we can see is our pH starts out really low because we have a solution of just our acid. As we slowly add base, our pH climbs, but we can see it does so in this weird curvy way. Okay, so each pH curve has four different regions to it, and it's important that we pay attention to which region we're in because we're going to have to uh, approach our calculation different for each region. Okay, this point here. This is our first region, all right? And this is before any of our titrant is added. Titrant is 
the thing in the burette, in this case, my base. All right, so that first pH point is just before I've added anything to it at all. Okay, so first set of calculation, we're going to sort of approach each one of these calculations for each region one at a time here. So again, region one. So here's your initial solution, right? Again, the first thing we do is we prepare this flask of acid. In this case, we're going to prepare a flask of hydrochloric acid that contains a concentration of 0.25 molar and has a volume of 100 milliliters. All right. Uh, this is now, since we're starting out with HCl, what is HCl? Strong, weak, what? Strong. strong. So this would be an example of a strong acid strong base titration. We haven't even introduced the base yet, but okay, and so that first point there, that initial concentration, we should be able to calculate the pH of a solution of a uh, strong acid, right? So everybody take a second and see if you can't remember how we would solve this problem here. Uh, I guess the real problem is what is the pH. Okay, see if we can't remember how to do that for a solution of strong acid. All right, so I know my concentration of HCl is 0 0.25 molar. How is that going to help me find the pH? What is that concentration also equal to? The concentration of hydronium ions, right? Remember that that's the whole shtick about a strong acid, is the concentration of a strong acid is equal to the concentration of H3O+. Plus. So then my pH is just the negative log of that 0 0.25, which I should do here. Zero point six, we'll do three decimal places. Why not? Uh, I guess we should be good about sig figs here because it's an easy one. All right, two sig figs, so two decimal places in my pH. Okay, so if we're just going to sort of break this down into steps, again, for a strong acid, strong base titration, that first point is before any titrant is added. And for a strong acid, strong base titration, this is just a pH of strong acid calculation. All 
All right, so again, what it, one of the things we would have learned last chapter is how to calculate the pH of a strong acid. That's just the skill that you would apply here for that very first point in your titration, just calculating the pH of that acidic solution. All right. Going back to our curve. All right, we see there's this really sharp increase that occurs here. The point in the very middle of that is what's called the equivalence point. This is actually our third region here. I'll talk about the second one in a moment, but we need to introduce this equivalence point first. So again, our third point is the equivalence point. And your equivalence point is where you have an equivalent amount of acid or base. Uh, I'm sorry, of acid to base, right? So the equivalence point means that moles of acid equals moles of base, right? You have exactly as many moles of acid as you have base in there. Okay. So let's take this problem again. We figured out our initial pH. Now we can ask Oh, not NaCl. That's not going to do crap. How much NaO8? Let's say how much Be even more specific. How many milliliters of 1.0 molar NaOH needs to be added to reach the equivalence point? Okay. So, remember, equivalence point means that moles of HCl will equal moles of NaOH. Everybody take a minute and tell me how many moles, actually, no, let me, let's do this together here. Um, remember, we said we're going to be relying quite heavily on the fact that volume times concentration gives you moles, right? I have a 0.25 molar solution of NaO of HCl. All right, that's my concentration. My volume is 100 milliliters. That's what my problem said. All right. Now, I can convert my milliliters to liters, and then I can figure out how many moles I have. All right, but we can actually save ourselves a step. If I did my calculation like this, so 100 times 0.25, I would get 25 <coughs> in my units. The liters part cancels out but my milli stays, okay? So my answer here would be in units of milli moles. Which probably sounds weird, right? We've heard of millimeters and milligrams and maybe even milliseconds, right? We can do the same thing with moles though. We can use those metric prefixes. <coughs> so I can solve this problem by converting to liters get my answer in moles, or I can keep it in millimoles and just save myself a step. Either one is equivalent. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. So I'm going to leave it in millimoles. So that means I have 25 millimoles of HCl. How many millimoles of NaOH am I going to have at the equivalence point? 25. Now I just got to figure out the volume, how many milliliters of one molar NaOH contains that 25 millimoles. Everybody take a second and see if you can't find out how many milliliters of solution of one molar NaOH we would use to get 25 millimoles of NaOH. I'm going to need to use my concentration, but am I going to be multiplying or dividing by that molarity? Do I want moles on the top or the bottom of this calculation? I need them on the bottom so the moles cancel out. So I'm going to divide by that 1.0 moles in one liter. Um, I can punch it into my calculator. I'm going to get 25. And then again, units, my moles cancel out, but my milli remains there, so it's milliliters. All right, so. We figured out how much, how much NaOH is required to get to our equivalence point. Now we can ask what the pH is. And for strong acids and strong bases, it's actually fairly straightforward, right? Everybody take a second. Uh, actually, for the interest of time, let's just do it together here. All right, if I react 25 millimoles of strong acid with 25 millimoles of strong base, right, this reaction will 100% go to completion here. And what would the pH be of a solution that it's a mixture of water and salt? Seven, right? So this is, these are both neutral compounds. Water's got a pH of seven. Salt is neither, a, you know, sodium chloride rather is neither acidic or basic, right? So this would have a pH of seven. It would be neutral. So for strong acids and strong bases, that equivalence point, the pH is always going to be really straightforward. It's just going to be neutral, going to be seven. All right, so again, making note of our calculations here, that third region is our equivalence point. We need to be able to calculate how much strong base is required. That's kind of the hard part. The easy part for a strong acid, strong base titration is the pH at the equivalence point. The pH is always 7. All right, so now our th a region that I kind of skipped over here is everything in the middle here. Region two is between the initial and the equivalence point. 
right? So I've started adding base, but I haven't added enough to actually reach my equivalence point yet. That's this region here. Okay, so again, our region two is between one and three. I've added my titrant, but not enough to reach that equivalence point. All right, so what would that look like? So now we can say, all right, we got our initial solution. We said that it would take 25 milliliters to reach that equivalence point, right? So then if I'm in this, that middle region there, I could ask something like, what is the pH? After only five milliliters, of one molar NaOH is added. All right, I haven't added that full 25 yet, so I'm not at my equivalence point, but I gotta figure out what the pH is after I've added five milliliters of this strong base. All right, so what's our strategy gonna be here? So region two, between that first and third. We're always gonna have to do this in two steps, all right? First step is we gotta figure out how much of this reaction has occurred, right? We know that it's not none because we've started to add base, but we know it's not completely over yet because we're not to our equivalence point. So step one is to determine how much reaction has occurred. And that means we're going to build an ice table. Right? Once we've figured out how much of this reaction has occurred, then we're going to do a second step to calculate the pH of the remaining solution. All right, so again, we're going to build a nice table. Here's our chemical reaction for this particular titration. OK? And actually, we can preface this. We're going to be determining how much acid-base reaction has occurred. Now, one of the pain in the butt things about these titrations that hasn't been an issue up until this point is that you're constantly adding solution, right? You're constantly changing the volume of your acidic mixture, right? So previously we were able to get away with building an ice table where we were looking at molarity because our volume wasn't changing. But since we're doing a titration and our volume is going to be constantly changing, we have to make sure to build our ice table not in molarity but in moles or millimoles, right? We have to convert to the actual moles of acid and base that we have. We can't leave it in concentration because as I add that five mils, my concentration is going to change for my acid, right? Because just because I've changed the volume. So we got to make a special note for these to convert 
to moles. And we can say or millimoles, which is what we're going to do here because it's a little bit more convenient. <coughs> All right, so HCl, NaOH. I don't really have to keep track of my products. I'm going to just for the sake of fun here. All right, and because it's going to be important when we move on to weak acids. All right, so I'll figure out how much NaCl I'm creating at the same time here. Uh, what do we say? We started out with 25 millimoles of HCl. We said we've added 5 milliliters of 1.0 molar NaOH. So I want everybody to take a second. Let's make sure that we can do these calculations. Tell me what our initial concentration of NaOH is here. I'm sorry, not a concentration. Initial amount of millimoles of NaOH. Given this volume and concentration, how many millimoles of NaOH? Everybody take a second and do that calculation. All right, what do we got? Five, right? So again, I'm going to take vol the same game we've played a bunch of times now. Volume times concentration will give me moles. So my five milliliters times my 1.0 moles of NaOH in one liter. Again, the liter portion cancels out. The milli remains along with the moles. And so I get five millimoles of base. All right, and initially we don't have any of our product in there. Okay. Now, importantly, how do we figure out the change that occurs? So, uh, the milli in terms of the millimoles of reaction that occurred. The concept here is similar to what we applied when we were talking about buffers, and that is that all of your strong will react. Right? So since in this case I have a strong acid and a strong base, every bit of it will react, right? But which one's going to be limiting here? My base. So I'm going to get rid of all five millimoles of that base. And if five millimoles of base have reacted, how much acid has also reacted? They gotta be one to one, right? So if I'm reacting five millimoles of base, I have to be getting rid of my five, mil, uh, five millimoles of those acid as well. And then what's gonna happen to the HCl? It's gonna go up five millimoles, exactly. Uh, yeah, I did mean NaCl, sorry. Right? So if these go down, that means that my product side will go up by that same amount. Water will go up too, but I got a bunch of water floating around. So then my final number of millimoles is 20 for my HCl. All that NaOH has reacted, so I'm left with zero there. And I've just created five new millimoles of sodium chloride. Okay. All right, but if ultimately my question is what is the pH? We're going to have to figure out what our new concentration is, right? Because I've just changed the volume of my solution. 
So my concentration of HCl is moles of HCl per liters of solution. Okay. This would actually be equivalent to millimoles of HCl in milliliters of solution. Right? Those millis would cancel out, so those would be equivalent. And that's kind of going to be the more convenient one to do. You can convert to moles and liters if you want, or we can save ourselves that step. Okay, so we just said that we have now 20 millimoles of HCl. What's the volume of our solution now? Remember, our whole premise is we took these 100 mils of HCl and we've added 5 mils of NaOH. So what's my new volume? 105 milliliters, right? So that's going to be kind of the pain in the butt. That's why we had to convert to moles in the first place, is our volume's changing as we're adding that base. So we've got to pay attention to that change in volume. So this is now divided by 105 milliliters. All right, so now by adding that base, that five milliliters of base, now we've changed our pH to being a 0.19 molar solution of HCl, <laughs> right? So we've done step one. We figured out how much of our reaction has occurred using this ice table. Now we gotta calculate the pH of this solution. Everybody take a second and remind yourself, how do you calculate the pH of a 0.19 molar solution of HCl? All right, remember that NAC, uh, uh, HCl is a strong acid, so that means that this concentration is just equal to my hydronium ion concentration. So I'm going to take the negative log of that 0 0.19. I actually copied it from my calculator, so I took all the digits, so you might get a slightly different number. But now my pH is 0.72. Okay, so when we're in between the equivalence point and our initial concentrate, our initial solution, we got to do two steps. We first got to figure out how much acid-base reaction occurred, right? By adding that base, I'm decreasing the amount of HCl that's in that solution. Once we figured out how much reaction has occurred, we can then calculate the pH of that solution that we're left over with. All right, and then the last region here, this is just this fourth region is after the equivalence point. Okay, <clears throat> and in terms of how we do these calculations in this fourth region, all right, again, this is after the equivalence point. Uh, we're actually going to do it basically the same way as we did before. 
we need to figure out how much of our acid-base reaction has occurred, and then we can calculate the pH of the remaining solution. All right, the difference is that uh, our remaining solution in that region two was a strong acid. Now after the equivalence point, I've kept on adding base, kept on adding base, kept on adding base. Am I going to have an acidic solution or am I gonna have a basic solution after the equivalence point? Basic, right? So that's the, the big difference between two and three. The approach, or, uh, I'm sorry, region two and four, the approach is very similar. The difference is, is that in region four, our remaining solution will be a strong base. All right, so let's go back to our problem that we've been working with here. But now we said that the equivalence point was at 25 mils. So now we're gonna figure out what happens if I blow past that equivalence point and I add in 40 mils of my base. What's the pH of that solution? All right, again, we're going to do something very similar. We're gonna build a nice table, but we're gonna have to convert to moles. All right, so everybody take a second and figure out if we have 40 mils of one molar NaOH, I want you to try to complete this ice table. All right, what's up? Now we're adding 40 mils to that same solution. All right, so again, we figured out that we're starting out with 25 millimoles of HCl. You gotta fill in the rest of the table for me considering that we're gonna be adding 40 mils of one molar NaOH. How many millimoles of NaOH am I starting out with? 40, all right? I'm gonna take my 40 milliliters. I'm gonna multiply it by that concentration. That gives me 40 millimoles of my NaOH. Now, if all of my strong will react here, how much of my uh, HCl is going to react? All of it, right? In this case, my HCl is the limiting one. I can't have more than 25 millimoles of HCl reacting, right? I just don't have that much. But all of it's going to react. So that means that all 25 are going to react. How much base is going to react? that same amount. And that means I'll get an excess, or I'll get an extra 25 millimoles of sodium chloride. <coughs> All right, so again, now that we're past our equivalence point, I have no more acid left over, but I've got an excess of my strong base in there. Uh, I have, a, 15 millimoles of NaOH left over. Okay, so then if we want to figure out the pH of this solution, dang it. We need to first figure out our concentration of NaOH. Right, we said we had 15 millimoles. And what am I gonna divide that by? My total volume, 
which is going to be my 100 mils of acid plus the 40 mils of NaOH that I've added, right? I've increased my volume to 140 milliliters. Whoops, where are we going? All right, so now 15 divided by 140. Okay, so then I'm going to take the negative log. And I'm done? No, because no, what did I just calculate? <clears throat> the pOH. <clears throat> Remember, when we're talking about a strong base, this isn't the pH, but the pOH. So I'm going to have to do 14 minus that value in order to get my pH, which is 13.03. All right, I should have a high pH because I got a solution of strong base. Cool, all right, so we have this titration. Depending on where we are on our titration curve, we're gonna have a slightly different approach for calculating pH, right? Initially, we just got a solution of strong acid. We're just gonna calculate the pH of it as we do a solution of strong acid. Uh, at the equivalence point, that means exactly as much base has been added as we have starting acid. Uh, for a strong acid, strong base titration, that pH is always seven. If we're in between there, we gotta figure out how much reaction has actually occurred and then calculate the pH of that leftover solution. All right, so in our time remaining, let's just try to do another example problem. Okay, so first, all right, so if we start off with 150 milliliters of 0.47 molar HCl, and we titrate it with 10 milliliters of 1.6 molar H, uh, NaOH. First, tell me what the pH of that initial solution was, all right? And then we're gonna figure out what the pH is of our solution after that titrant was added. <clears throat> All right, we're going for the speed record here. What is the pH of that initial solution? Excellent, right? So I'm just gonna take the negative log of that initial concentration. Because again, strong acid, I can say that that concentration is the same as my hydronium ion. So just the negative log of that initial value. I guess 0.33. All right, but now for the hard part, 
Now we got to figure out the pH after 10 milliliters of 1.6 molar NaOH has been added. So remember, you got to build me an ice table. But what are we going to remember about the units of this ice table? Got to be in millimoles, all right? So given this problem here, try to fill in this ice table. That's kind of the hard part about what we learned how to do today. All right, I, w I want you all to try to do it as much as you can. If you get stuck, you can look up. I'm going to kind of quietly fill in this table in case anybody's uh, stuck. All right, so I got my initial amount of moles for each of these, right? And to be clear, what I've been using is the fact that milliliters times molarity gives me millimoles. So I just did that for my acid. I did that for my base. That's how I got 70.5 millimoles of acid and 16 millimoles of base. All right, again, all of that strong is going to react. Since my 16 is what's limiting here, I'm going to have 16 millimoles of base reacting with 16 millimoles of acid, leaving me with 54.5 millimoles of acid. So now I just got to determine the concentration. And what's my new volume? 160, right? The 10 mil, the 150 mils that I started with plus my 10 mils. So then the negative log of that concentration is going to give me my pH. Oh, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, my bad. I jumped the gun. I just put the pH there. Sorry, try and go fast. 0 0.47, that's my pH. How did I get 16 millimoles? I took my 10 mils and multiplied it by my molarity of 1.6.
All right, so we'll finish up titrations on Monday.